An important update now as traffic safety activists in Brooklyn are not backing down after getting news the road redesign they've been pushing for on McGinnis Boulevard has been simplified as part of a compromise. Anna Klieger covers Brooklyn. She's been reporting on this issue for more than a year now and she joins us with the very latest. Hannah. Maurice Christine, for more than a decade, Greenpoint activists have been organizing, calling for changes to this deadly roadway. Their years of activism and studies brought a DOT-approved plan that would narrow the four-lane boulevard to two lanes, adding a protected bike, uh, a parking lane and a protected bike lane. Last year, the mayor pulled the plug on that plan, and he implemented an interim proposal for a portion of the roadway, which will now be adapted to the rest of the street. Yeah. Jordana Jacobs says she and her son were almost run over by a reckless truck driver, an encounter familiar to many here. My son and I talked about it frequently, and it's the only reason why I don't let him walk around the neighborhood. Councilmember Lincoln Ressler has been a stark supporter of a full redesign of the boulevard, a plan backed by more than 10,000 residents. Every single city, state, and federal elected official who represents Greenpoint and the surrounding area have signed on in support of the Make McGinnis Safe plan. There is impressive consensus around this plan. Instead, the mayor backtracked on the DOT's original redesign proposal last year after getting pushback from businesses tied to the neighborhood storied film industry. Activists waited with bated breath until last month when he finalized a new plan billed as a compromise which includes a bike lane and so-called flex lane, sometimes for driving, sometimes for parking. Bronwyn Breitner is a coordinator at Make McGinnis Safe. Nobody's parking in the flex lane, which means that it's four lanes all hours of the day and the bike lane is constantly blocked. The Department of Transportation says this next phase of work is expected to begin this month, but the so-called compromise plan left both proposed Opponents and opponents of the redesign unhappy and disappointed. This neighborhood is divided over this. This plan is a failure. This is not a compromise. Mayor Adams addressed the disappointment after the announcement. I've learned in negotiation if both sides are unhappy, that's a good negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> Since then, more rallies. Dozens of cyclists rode the boulevard in opposition last month. Last night, a heated community board meeting with DOT allowed people to voice their grievances. Why are you not listening to the 10,000? people who have supported the road diet. Next Thursday, Make McGinnis Safe is planning a march in the streets to show they won't back down. And Hannah's back with us now. You've been covering this for a long time, year and a half or so, but people, I mean, th this has really struck a nerve, right? Why do you yeah. think people get so riled up about this one? People feel really, really strongly about this. It's like one of the main concerns in the community. Keep in mind, this is a deadly roadway, and there's been a string of fatalities that activists can list dating back to the creation of the boulevard in the 50s. The final straw for a lot of people was a hit and run, a death of a beloved teacher named Matthew Jensen in 2021 at that same intersection where I reported today. All right. Thank you for that update, Hannah. Appreciate it. And by the way, Hannah is a Brooklyn native who covers the borough for us. If you have a story idea, you can email the address there right on your screen.